details of that crime to you here and on the web. But after the scene is cleared, the hole left for those whose loved ones were taken too soon never goes away. They tell us their voices are silenced with a community that neglects their needs. John Schoenheider heard what their needs are now and how they're continuing to cope with their pain in part one of our special report, Life After Death. There's a war on the streets of Peoria with consecutive years of growing gun violence deaths. Two adults and four kids were hospitalized in a mass shooting at the end of August. The next day, there were back-to-back -back killings with one of the mass shooting victims dying. In 2021, Peoria recorded its highest number of gun-related homicides ever. But there's a cost to war, and what comes next for the families of these victims? Do they have enough resources to emotionally recover after these tragedies happen to them? Yolanda Wallace lost her son in 2006 to gun violence. Amid her continued grief, Wallace is still determined to give a voice to parents like her, whose children were gunned down. They say we're treating violence like it's a disease, okay? And if it is a disease, then it's probably contagious. And then if it's contagious, that means it's going to spread. And if it's spreading, who's going to stop it? She's taking action in a public way, becoming an outspoken advocate at community events for anti-violence initiatives. I've heard many a mother say, I see how they treat you. Why would I want to be on TV? Why would I want them to talk to me that way? Pastor Kevin Hill first met Yolanda after her son was killed. Years later, the two reconnected while on their own missions to talk to residents about their anti-violence message. I just think she could use more help in what she's trying to do to be an agent of healing. Wallace still works today to fill in the gaps of support for families she says have experienced the same violent tragedies. There hasn't been very many of me, like me, you know what I mean, who are out there. To bring together mourning parents like her, Wallace created a support group called Mothers Against Violence. Those in attendance include people like Peoria County Clerk Rachel Parker. I don't know how much time passed, but they came out and they, um, when the nurse came back, she was with the chaplain. So as soon as she opened her mouth and she said, I'm so sorry, and that's all I remember. Her son was shot and killed June 3rd of 2020, and his murder is still unsolved with no suspect leads. You hear something or you're afraid to kind of be by yourself because you, you don't know if that person's still, you know, watching us or coming around us. When Parker's son was killed, Chris Duncan was the president of Peoria Community Against Violence, known as PCAV. The group was created with the goal of helping families at crime scenes and following up with in-person check-ins and mental health resources. We were trying to be like a buffer, talk to them about, uh, hey, it's, it's, it's not a bad thing to give information to the police. Duncan says their work only went so far. No, there's, no, there's never enough. He left PCAV in 2021 and wouldn't talk about the current organization. Today I have called you here to call you and the citizens of Peoria to action. In July, PCAV announced it needs $300,000 to stay afloat. But on November 30th, President Becky Rossman said they were shutting down for good. We reached out to the organization for a comment and were told they wouldn't take part in the story, but they offered a brief statement when they announced their closure. According to the Peoria Mayor's Office, money for anti-violence grants are chosen by the Peoria County Health Department. We also reached out to health department officials to ask how they pick recipients of those grants and never heard back. Some people think things used to be different. But there are ways for families to find support of all kinds, from financial to mental health to spiritual. We'll hear from those leading the charge to make the change some say is lacking next time. And in part two, we will hear the ways the community is offering to support families and whether or not they say it's enough. That is tomorrow right here on 25 News at 6. Thanks, John. Tis the season for sick.